Uh, hi all. Uh, good, good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, monsoon lectures. Uh, I, I, before I invite formally invite Shabnam to the uh, digital platform, I will just quick, give a quick introduction to uh, what what the series is about. Uh, this is the second talk in the series we have been doing. It's called monsoon lectures, and the theme of the lectures this uh, semester is one book and one project. Uh, in this curated series of lectures titled One Book and One Project, we invite speakers from various creative disciplines to share with us a book of their choosing and a project from their field, literature, architecture, film, or music could be any field, that may have left a profound impact on their thinking or their own body of work. In a world that is highly connected and with information that is readily accessible at our fingertips, the speakers will throw light on how the book and the project made a lasting impact on their creative journey. Uh, so we have been testing, uh, experimenting with the format a bit. So we use the book and the project as a point of entry into what the, the speaker is thinking. It could lead to other books or it could lead to their own projects. So we have left that sort of format open and we use the book and the project just as a point of entry into their thinking process. Uh, we are happy to sort of partner for this particular talk and the series itself with Anand National University, Ahmedabad. Uh, uh, we welcome the faculty and uh, the students of Anand National University. Uh, the, so we are, the next talk we are planning along with Professor Kulbushan Jain on September 11th. We invite all of you to come back to this event. And uh, Anand, Uni Anand University will be taking this series forward with a few more talks in the same theme. So students from WCFA will be participating in their event also. That's the partnership we are looking forward for. Uh, we welcome uh, new students and faculty. And I, I wanted to quickly give a note of thanks for all the people who have been part of this project. Uh, I would uh, thank uh, system administrator Chitapa for hosting and getting Zoom right this time. And admin team at office, the social media team Shashanka Nanish, and Shreyas, who is sort of co-hosting the event with me. Uh, welcome all the students of WCF and faculty also. Uh, I think it's raining in Bangalore and Mysore, so our signal is going to be a little tricky. Uh, excuse us if there is some disturbance in between. Uh, we request you to keep uh, keep your camera off and mute, and uh, we, the, the talk is going to be for one hour, and we will open up for last 15 to 20 minutes uh, for questions. We'll have a question and session at the end. Uh, now, a formal introduction to Shabnam. Uh, Shabnam, welcome to WCFA. We wish we could invite you to campus also and have a talk sometime. Welcome, welcome to welcome to WCFA. And uh, so, this is a quick introduction. Uh, most you. of you are familiar with the work. Uh, Shabnam has been exploring the philosophy of Kabir, Shah Latif, and other mystic poets through a deep engagement with the with their oral folk traditions for close to two decades ever since the riots of Gujarat in 2002 propelled her on this quest. Her inspiration in this poetry has taken the shape of four documentary films on Kabir, a digital archive called Ajab Shahar, writing books, organizing urban festivals and rural yatras, singing and performing herself and infecting students with the challenge of mystic poetry, which we are looking forward to today. Uh, her film Kabira Khada Bazaar may won the special jury prize at the National Film Awards 2011. Please excuse my pronunciation. She has worked on two books, I Saw Myself Journeys with, with Shah Abdul Latif Vitai and Burn Down Your House, Life Lessons from Kabir. Uh, welcome, welcome Shabnam. Uh, welcome to college. We look forward. Thank you. Yeah. I can stop sharing. I, I Sorry, I had a special request. Uh, this is a request for all of you. Uh, we won't be able to change your how your Zoom is set. So we request all of you to go to Shabnam's uh, video image, right click on it, and say pin. Once you you please drag the viewer to half the way so that the slideshow and the speaker come in 50-50%. So we can also listen to Shabnam singing and also to the lyrics, which is on the slide. It would be very convenient to uh, in this format. Yeah. Thank you all.
thank you thank you so much uh, yeah thank you kiran um thank you for inviting me to this very interesting uh curated series i should say that i found the brief quite invigorating uh, it's not often that someone generally people invite you to speak about your work but it was an interesting twist that you guys came up with which was to for me to invoke uh, uh, authors or creative people who have influenced me deeply uh, so i was quite uh, happy to respond to this brief and uh, uh, by way of a small introduction to my work, uh, I will show uh, three short, very short films, uh, which we created when we crafted the uh, uh, online digital archive uh, called Ajab Sheher. Uh, oh dear, one sec. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Um, uh, so when we uh, launched Ajab Sheher, we crafted these very short videos. I think they will take you right into the heart of what uh, my work has been over these two decades and where all I've been uh, ghumoing and what I've been grooving to, uh, me and our team at the Kabir Project. So uh, I hope you can hear this clearly. <laughs> videos because I will be saved the job of giving you a flavor of the uh, kind of ideas, the kind of poetry that uh, my work has engaged in. So here's an
You can see um, our work has uh, traveled uh, westwards into Pakistan and east till Bengal, uh, working with three broad traditions of uh, mystic poetry and music, uh, Sufi, uh, Bhakti, and Baul. Um, and I believe uh, we all know that these traditions are in deep consonance with each other in terms of the ideas their spirituality and their politics. So, one more short film. कबीर के वाणी से तो बहुत दम मिलता है ये करने करे तो क्यों डरे ने करके तो बसता और बोया पेड़ बहुल करे तो आम काल से कबीर पंथ का नियम ऐसा है कि सब एक है देयर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन लव इरोटिक लव डिवोशन एवरीथिंग कम्स टुगेदर वेव्स आर सर्जिंग इन द इन द वेंस ऑफ योर बॉडी बिकॉज़ द गुरु हैज टच्ड योर पल्स घट पाए वे घरन घूंघट पा वे घरन में अखड़ियों अड़ाए विधे पराए दरन पैजे घर जी नाय सार संभाल इश्क शराब के सामने ये अगर इस नजर से देखा जाए तो सूफीज़म किसी मजहब व मिल्लत का वो मोहताज नहीं है ये ह्यूमैनिटी की बात एक कसर दर लख सै से सद से गिर की हूं जहां करिया परख त्या साहिब साहू <laughs> मनुष्य जन्म अटल पृथ है ये उल्टा चल है क्यों क्या अपन का गोंड तो इधर है ये हाथ पैर टाला है द वर्ल्ड रन्स टुवर्ड्स टुवर्ड्स यू नो डाउन एंड आई रन टुवर्ड्स अप वेयर माय परमात्मा इसलिए कबीर कहते हैं कि मैं नहीं जानता मैं तो बड़ी सीधी सी बात कह रहा हूं संसार को उल्टा है उल्टो बाउल साची कहो तुम्हारन धाव झूठा जग पतियाना संतो देखो जब बोरा सो आई शोड यू दो थ्री ग्लिम्सेस बिकॉज इट will plan i thought it would plunge you straight into uh the kind of ideas the kind of wisdom the kind of philosophy that uh th our work has uh, sought to uh ferret out from uh the corners of our country uh, uh as you notice we are not only in conversation with scholars and uh very very uh, literate uh, urban educated people we are actually privileging in these knowledge traditions working with people from villages oral 
scholars of uh, Kabir or Shah Latif or Bhittai. And uh, these journeys in seeking questions around religion, about social divisions, about nationalism, about death, impermanence, often in these journeys, I would be stopped short by Kabir himself or by uh, these folk singers who, many of whom were gurus to me from whom I learned so much. Uh, I would be stopped short and forced to turn the camera as it were upon myself forced to turn the gaze upon myself as an artist, as a creative practitioner, seeking something. And the question would be put to me, Kabir Kabir kya kare socho aap sharir? You know, like, what are you going on and on seeking outwards? Kabir, have you cast a gaze upon yourself? So I want to uh, show you a small clip of uh, one of the films I made on Kabir called Had Anhad. Uh, and I will first just cue that uh, video. Just give me a minute. Okay. This comes towards the end of uh, a journey in quest of Kabir's Ram, which took me on a journey from Ayodhya through Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, crossing the border over to Karachi in Pakistan. So this moment uh, is uh, happening at the end of the film when we are returning, and the film is just about to get over. अरे तीन गुण पर ते दे हमारा अरे पास्ता तू पर जो ते जले तीन गुण पर ते जे हमारा अरे पाता तू पर जोते जले पाता तू पर जोते जले मक्खी और परवाने का कुश्ता है मक्खियों ने दावा किया किंग आप परवाना से कि भी हमारे भी पर हैं हमारे भी हम भी उड़ना जानते हैं हम भी तुम्हीं जैसे हैं तो आप हमको परवाना मान लो तो शाह परवाना ने कहा कि भी जाओ और रोशनी तलाश करो जाओ और रोशनी तलाश करो परवाने का काम सिर्फ रोशनी तलाश करता है तो वो मक्खियाँ उड़ी मक्खियाँ कुछ दस पंद्रह मिनट में गांव देहातों में इधर उधर गई और जाकर उन्होंने फॉर्म फॉर वापस आई कि जी फलाने गांव में रोशनी हो रही है फलाने में दिया जल रहा है फलाने में आग जल रही है वहाँ पर चिता जल रही है भर 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 बुला के बैठ गए अब वो मक्खियों ने बादशाह से कहा कि जी वो आप फैसला कीजिए कि हमें फैसला क्या करें कहीं जब वो आएंगे तो जब आपके परवाने आएंगे तो पता चलेगा कि वो कामयाब रहे कि हम कामयाब तो परवाना के परवानों का बात कहता है कि बेटा फैसला तो हो चुका है जी क्या फैसला हो चुका है तो कहा कि उल्लू के पट्टों जिसको रोशनी मिल गई है उसको वापस आने की क्या जरूरत है जो रोशनी जिसने पाली वो तो कुर्बान हो गया वो तो एक हो गया जिनको कामयाबी जिनको सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए था जिनको सर्टिफिकेट चाहिए तो इस वक्त इस वक्त हम सर्टिफिकेट का काम कर रहे हैं हम जो है कभी को आर सकल हंस में राम है विराजे सो I wanted to share that particular episode with all of you because I know the bulk of my audience here are young students, uh, creative professionals, aspiring creative practitioners. And uh, I wanted to signal to you this moment, which I feel is really profound, because what this Kaval Fariduddin Ayaz in Karachi is doing in this moment, as you may have seen, 
is he is literally grasping my camera lens with his hand at the end of this clip. And he is asking me, what is my quest? As a creative practitioner, what am I searching for? What do I hope to achieve? Uh, and I think that's a question you all must be asking yourselves as, as you shape yourselves for a career. Like, what is it that we seek when we set out with our skills and our talents and our education degrees? As he says, he's laughing at me for wanting a certificate to prove that I did something, I learned something. Uh, and he's poking me. So what is he poking me about? What is this Roshni that he is saying that I should blend into? What is this being a Parvana, you know? And to start sharing my learnings as a creative practitioner with all of you, I, I want to take you back to somewhere around the years 2005, 6, 7, which is when I was uh, struggling to edit uh, for feature-length Kabir documentary films. Uh, I'm primarily trained as a filmmaker. And I had uh, got sucked into these oral traditions of Kabir. Uh, uh, and I had been traveling for two, three years by now, uh, documenting and gathering rich footage of the sort that you saw in the beginning films. I was sitting on uh, almost four to 500 hours of very rich, uh, field experiences, footage about conversations, music in the field around all of this. And I was in the throes of a complete breakdown. Breakdown because uh, I was daunted with the task of now finally confronting the moment when I have to say my piece, when I have to edit and put out these films there that would be my unique offering to the discourse around Kabir. So I was building up so much anxiety in myself. My, I think my artistic ego was, was, was daunted and in a, in a tizzy. The kind of questions that were clogging my head were, what is my signature? What is my original contribution? Um, what is my style? Um, what do I have to say? And I was blocked. And uh, the burden grew to such a peak that uh, I felt something break, something really, it was like, that's why they call it a breakdown, right? And I wanted to say that really, if I look back in my creative journey, that was possibly the most important time in my life. When something broke, what broke? I think it was my ego that got shattered. You know, I, I really, truly confronted the, the, the realization that I'm no great shakes. I'm not one, uh, uh, I'm not going to make masterpieces. That was very clear to me. And I was so uh, wretched at one level and curiously, becoming lighter by the minute. When I say lighter, I, I want to signal to you that when you have a breakdown of that kind where your creative ego is crushed, you become free. Something subtly shifted for me in that process. I stopped uh, thinking that I'm going to make masterpieces. Instead, I wanted to make an offering. And it is this word offering that kind of rescued me in that moment. Um, suddenly, it was not about what I want to say, but what is this footage trying to say? Uh, it was not about uh, me saying my piece as much as me listening to what this footage wanted to say. And what began to reveal itself to me very clearly in that moment was that I was not making these films. I had not made any of this uh, footage. I had in fact received it. Uh, I had received it from a space beyond the reach of my small self. In fact, these experiences were 
gifts to me. And all I had to do was pass the gift on to others. And that's when something began to shift and things began to flow. And uh, things began to fall into place in the editing process. Um, I stopped trying to exert my will on the footage. I capitulated my artistic will and I became alert and present to what was wanting to emerge through me. I started crafting the footage, I like to say, inwards out rather than outwards in, you know. Uh, the footage itself had a truth that I had to first listen to uh, and allow that to go through, just pass through me. So this is, this is what, uh, what that whole period uh, signaled to me. Uh, and I've touched upon many ideas here, um, but uh, later, and even in that moment, uh, of course, Kabir is never far from speaking to me and offering his two piece to everything that I undergo. So I hope you can see my slideshow now. So I'm going to share with you a Doha where Kabir says, Mera mujh mein kuch nahi, jo kuch hai so tera. Tera tujh ko somp do. Kya lage hai mera? There's nothing in me that's mine. All, I, all that is, is yours. I offer to you what's already yours. What can I say is mine? Or what can I say I've lost? So uh, this experience uh, really kind of resonated for me in a book uh, which is called The Gift. And it was a book that was gifted to me. Uh, by Lewis Hyde, the gift, creativity and the artist in the modern world. So that's my chosen book along with another book today called The Unknown Craftsman by Soetsu Yanagi, a Japanese author who reflects on the role of the craft in the context of Japanese and Korean um, pottery. Uh, and the project that I will reference in the course of my talk is uh, are the songs of a wonderful contemporary, uh, very popular and renowned writer, Dhruv Bhatt, who I think is here with us today in this Zoom call, uh, quietly listening. Um, I'm very inspired by Dhruv Dada's poetry in Gujarati, and I'm going to share with you a couple of his songs that I feel speak about the creative process. So. Um, This is what Lewis Hyde says, a gift is not something we get by our own efforts. It cannot be bought. It cannot be obtained by an act of will. It is bestowed upon us. That's why talent is rightfully called a gift because no amount of will or effort can cause its initial appearance. For an artist, often intuition or inspiration is received as a gift. As the artist works, some portion of the creation is bestowed upon her. An idea pops into the head, a tune begins to play. The artist is exhilarated by her work when this gratuitous element appears. With it comes the uncanny sense that I, the artist, did not make the work. So D.H. Lawrence has famously said, not I, not I, but the wind that blows through me. So uh, this book opened up in this book, I recognized my process and it, it gave it a lot of strength and clarity. In this book, I'm told that in uh, ancient Greece and Rome, uh, nobody would be foolish enough to say, you know, that man is a genius. Nobody could be a genius. You could have a genius. Genius was always understood as a divine attendant spirit that is outside of you, never inside you, never you yourself. People were not geniuses. They could uh, 
uh, solicit a genius in their creative work. So an essential part of an artist's work is not creation as much as invocation. Because part of the work cannot be made, it has to be received. We cannot have this gift except perhaps by supplication, by courting, by creating within ourselves that begging bowl to which the gift is drawn. So, uh, I want to now take you through uh, two, three ideas about how one courts the gift, how one courts or supplicates uh, the ability to receive a gift. And different artists have spoken about this differently, and I resonate with all of them. And as we go along, you will hear the voice of Lewis Hyde, Suetsu Yanagi, Dhruv Dada, and of course, Kabir is never uh, absent from any conversation. Um, so the first thing a lot of people speak about in this creative process is the idea of listening. Uh, Socrates famously uh, was supposed to have an oracle, a daemon, as he called it, who used to speak to him, and he listened to the wisdom that he heard. Milan Kundera says, every true, true novelist listens for that suprapersonal wisdom, which explains why great novels are always a little more intelligent than their authors. Novelists who are more intelligent than their books should go into another line of work. Kabir says, Mati kahe kumhar se tu kya ronde mohe? Ik din aisa aega main rondungi tohe. Of course, this uh, Doha translates as clay says to the potter, You may need me. True. One day will surely come when I'll be needing you. Uh, of course, at, at a core level, this Doha is, is uh, an encounter with death, with impermanence, with perishability of things. But it's also a pointer to the idea of an artist and her material. Uh, Kabir is signaling that he is able to listen, listen to something other than the voices in his own head. He is able to listen as a potter, as a kumhar, to the material, what the clay is wanting to say. Kumar Gandhar famously used to say, he was a legendary classical vocalist, and he used to say, Main sun raha hun, jo aapko suna raha hun, which translates as, uh, I'm, I'm listening to that which I am singing to you. So before you speak, before you stake your claim, before you show your stuff, you have to be quiet and you have to listen. Kabir says, Koi sunta hai guru gyani gagan mein aawaz hove jhini jhini. Kabir is always pushing us to listen to that subtle sound <clears throat> in the sky. Of course, the sky is there, the sky is here, but the stress is on a kind of an inward, inward quietening. Quietening, because unless there is a quietening, you won't be able to listen. The second idea I want to share with you is the idea of birthing. As these are all terms I'm relating with the creative process. And why do I say birthing? So it's so Yanagi says, art is difficult as long as we follow the path of jiriki, which is salvation through one's own efforts, rather than tariki, abandonment of efforts at self-reliance, rather reliance on grace. The differences between things born and things made. So uh, here I want to uh, introduce you to a song by Dhruv Dada. It's in Gujarati. Because this is exactly what Dhruv Dada speaks about regarding his own creative process as a poet. As a poet who's created many poem songs, which have been taken up by many who have sung them, 
So Dhruv Dada asks, Tame gaya akash bhari prite te geet kaho mahara kehvai kai rite. You sang with a, um, with a love that filled the sky. Then tell me, how can I say, no, no, this song is mine? He's the poet, right? He's the creator. So how can I say this belongs to me? Geet ne to avatar hu ichha thi hoye che ke chal jai kant kant mahaliye. Here, Dhruv Dada is actually giving full agency to the song. Like Kabir was listening to the clay, he is listening to the song as an entity outside of himself. This song has agency. What is he saying? Geet ne to avatar hu ichha thi hoye. The song will manifest and arrive literally take an avatar at its own whim, uski ichha se, not at my calling, ke chal jai kant kant maaliye. <laughs> when the song is ready, it will come thinking, oh, I think the time has come to go and hang out in many singers' throats. Mahaliye matlab, have a good time. Have a good time in many people's throats. So then, wouldn't it be a little stupid for me to say, no, 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 you belong to me and, you know, stuff you into my pocket? The one who has the ability to shower love upon this song wins this song. How can I say this song How can I say this song belongs to me? And now we come to, uh, in all of Dhruv Dada's songs, I find that the second antra is loaded. You know, the first antra is warm up. Then the second antra is when he really unfurls the kernel of the philosophy of the song. And here he is using the image of birthing. Amne anadit hoi, sampadiyu ke sampadi ho, pira evi ke sehvai nahi. It is true that in giving birth to this song, I have suffered a pain that is unbearable. No act of creation is without pain. It is true that I have suffered a lot of pain. That may be true, but still, it doesn't make Mathura into Gokul. For those of you not familiar with the mythology around Krishna, you must remember that Krishna was birthed by Devaki in Mathura, but then adopted by Yashodhara in Gokul, which is where he grew up. So Dhruv Dada is saying, it's true, I gave birth to this, but it doesn't make Mathura into Gokul. Ame apya je devki ni rite, te geet kaho mahara kehvai kai rite. So if I gift, you, this Krishna song, like Devki did, how can I say, this song is mine? So this has immense implications for any creative process, for all of us creative artists in a modern world, trying to negotiate our expressions with both the market and the commons. So I'm going to just quickly sing this song for you. Tame gaya ya kash bhari prite te geet kaho mara kehvai kai rite. Tune is also Dhruv Dada's, or not his. Hotame gaya ya kash bhari prite te geet kaho mara kehvai kai rite. Geet ne to avatar wo e chathi hoye chhe ke chal jai kanth kanth mahaliye aapne to e vada ke ke vada ke maru 
मुझे चाल कही गजवा मांगा लिए हो जे प्रेम करी पामे ते जीते ते गीत कहो मारा कहवाए कई रीते हो तो मैं गाया या काश भरी प्रीते ते गीत कहो मारा कहवाए कई रीते That's why uh, you never say I made a baby, or maybe you do sometimes. But more often you will say, "I gave birth to a baby," because there is a difference between making and allowing something to be born. So uh, the role of the artist becomes almost one of a trustee, like Devki, not a mother that clings with a sense of mine, but one who lets go. With the awareness of having been a channel, and he so beautifully in this speaks about the pain of giving birth. So uh, this brings us to the third idea, because in this act of creation, as you can see, nature is being invoked. You are stepping back to allow nature to do its work. So this brings us to the third idea around creativity, which I'm borrowing a term now from um, Chinese philosophy of Taoism, which is called doing not doing. It's translated as we wu we, a doing not doing, and I'm going to juxtapose that with the idea that I receive from Kabir, which is sahaje sahaje. You know, sahaj. People who know the common parlance of Hindi, how the word sahaj gets used, sahaj is uh, spontaneously, naturally, on its own, easily. Okay. So, according to this philosophy of Taoism. What they present before us is a model of non-striving, in which non-action is described as the purest and most effective form of action. Uh, Kabir says something quite beautifully resonant. He says, "Jitni leher samund me, utni man ki dor. Sehje moti nipje jab man aave hai thor." Restless like the ocean waves, this mind is always on the run. When it grows still and comes to a halt, spontaneously a pearl is born. So you can see uh, all the ideas resonant with the idea of uh, giving up feverish, uh, a willful egoic control in a process, capitulating that. And when you do that, something takes shape, something emerges. Um, so now I'm going to uh, show you a clip from a film called uh, Chalo Hamara Desh. It's a two minute clip. I'm on a train journey to Banaras with Prahlad Tipanyaji from Madhya Pradesh, a folk singer, 
uh, a knower of Kabir in quite deep ways. We are traveling in this train and uh, uh, he says a few very uh, intriguing things. Uh, about sahajta kya hoti hai, sahajta ki kya sthiti hai. Um, so I will just cue that for you. Give me a minute. Yes, Nirgun was suited to me. Suited to me. Yes, yes, away. ये घाट बनाया है जैसे कि ये हिंदुओं का घाट है या मुसलमानों का या नीचे जाति का या ऊंची जाति का ये घाट बने हैं और वहाँ पर पानी भरने का काम करते हैं या मन ज्ञान लेने का काम करते हैं या कुछ वस्तु हासिल करने का काम करते हैं वो घाट भाई जहाँ पर जैसे नदी के ऊपर घाट बना तो वो स्नान करने का और कुछ ऐसे घाट है जहाँ जैसे अभी इनकी दुकान है तो वो इनकी दुकान का घाट मतलब वो स्थान जहाँ पर से हमें वो चीज घाट होते हैं घाट होते हैं घाट है मणिकंदा घाट है राजघाट है सबके हाँ बन वस्तु को लेने का भी तो घाट है घाट का मतलब होता है एक विशेष स्थान विशेष स्थान जहाँ वो मिलते हैं जो भी है उनके अलग घाट है और जैसे कि ये दूसरी कह रहे हैं ऐसे उनके अलग अलग ऐसे घाट बने हुए हैं तो वो जो घाट है तो उन घाटे पानी सब भरे उन उन घाट के ऊपर सब भरते हैं पर ओघट ओघट भरे ना कोई ऐसा जहाँ पर इस तरह का कोई घाट नहीं है ऐसी जगह पर पानी भरने वाले बहुत कम है या न घाट के ऊपर भर करके तो आप सीमा में बन जाएंगे बनारसी साड़ी का घाट इनका है तो इसलिए आप वहाँ से बनारसी साड़ी लेंगे वहाँ से आप किसी दूसरी तरह की साड़ी आपको नहीं मिलेगी या वहाँ क्योंकि वहाँ पर उसकी प्राथमिकता है तो इस वजह से आप उस सीमा में बन गए जिससे आपकी साउथ की साड़ी है हम बनारस में आप आकर हम साउथ की दिखाएंगे तो आप नहीं लेंगे तो बनारसी साड़ी ही लेंगे इसी इसी तरह से जब तक इंसान उन घाटों पर बंधा रहेगा क्योंकि हद केवल जाति धर्म संप्रदाय की मजम्मत की ही नहीं होती ज्ञान की गाने बजाने की और विषय वासना की स्त्री पुरुष की ये भी हद है मैं कहता हूँ कि मैं बहुत अच्छा गाता हूँ तो मैं गाने के हद में बंधा बहुत सारा कहता है कि मैं बहुत सारा जानकार हूँ या मैं बहुत विद्वान हूँ तो वो उसके हद में बंधा जबकि सहजता की स्थिति के लिए जितनी भी हद हैं ये सब समाप्त होना चाहिए इनसे छूटने का उपाय आदमी स्वयं करेगा तो तो होगा जैसे कैमरों को आपने पकड़ रखा है कैमरे ने आपको नहीं पकड़ा तो इस तरह से कैमरे ने कहा कि आप मुझे पकड़ो आपने पकड़ रखा है तो आप उससे बंधे हुए हैं तो इस तरह की जिस किस्म की भी आसक्तियां हैं वो हमने बांध रखी है यदि हृदय माही यार सी और मुख देखा नहीं जा मुख तो तब ही देखिए जब दिल की दुविधा जाए सो एज यू कैन सी दिस इज अ सेकेंड क्लिप फ्रॉम द फिल्म वेयर माई कैमरा बिकम्स द पॉइंट ऑफ फोकस Uh, which is why i have plucked it out here because the subject of this talk is to to go a little deeper into this 
the process itself, the creative process. What was Prehladji signaling to me? It's quite elusive, isn't it? I, I still find myself uh, struggling a little bit to, to catch it. What he's saying is that our self-definitions shackle us. Uh, the, the boundaries, the ghat that we uh, put ourselves into is a choice we make. And for sahajta, to be in a state of sahajta, you need to free yourself. You need to let go of these self-definitions which actually limit you. In retrospect, I realized that it is only when I let go of the camera that I found the courage to sing. And that ability that came to me like a gift, it was not something I sought. It came to me like a gift. So, um, and the second interesting thing being said here is about going beyond this Dilki Duvidha when you are trying to see who you are in the mirror of your heart, you have to let go of duality. Duality is the core by which we get limited and trapped into a notion of me versus you. This and not this. And for a state of sahajta, for a state of creative flow, you have to be free of that. Uh, because that self-consciousness is what, uh, really speaking, can kill the process of, of touching something like a parvana. So, uh, Swetsu Yanagi says, if I turn to the things that display real beauty, they can be described as neither perfect nor imperfect. They come out of a world that existed before this dualism began, or rather not before or after, but in a world where this dualism is irrelevant. Their slight irregularities, he's talking about those folk crafted pots, come by chance and not by self-conscious deliberation. The precise and the perfect carries no overtones, admits of no freedom. The perfect is static and regulated, cold and hard. Beauty must have some room, must be associated with freedom. Freedom indeed is beauty. The love of the irregular is the sign of the basic quest for freedom. So now I'll come to the last key idea around creativity which comes up a lot in Kabir, in these mystic traditions, and in the voice of Dhruv Dada in this next song, which is the idea of emptying. In fact, I find in, uh, uh, okay, I sometimes like to con think of creativity as good plumbing. Uh, things have to be in a flow. Uh, if there's too much baggage in you, of old ideas and identities, you're not empty. Uh, you're not creating space for something new to come in and for a flow to happen. So I see it as good plumbing, you know? And I find it mirrored in the creativity of Dhruv Dada's songs, where I find him repeatedly returning to the water cycle as a metaphor for creativity. In this next song that I'm going to share with you, he speaks to us, he asks of us, a question, what would happen if we became a cloud? Chalne vadal thaiye ane joiye ke kyaank thai chhe dhodham dhod jevun ka ek apna vishye. He's saying, come on, let's turn into a cloud and see, will something thunder and shower out of me? Apna ma koi hal jole ne koi be jana jai bhinjata khetar bhani jai bhinjata vavani mishe. When I arrive in the shape of a cloud, will 
two people take to the fields with a plow in hand on the pretext of planting weed, uh, seeds, getting soaked, getting soaked. Apne to akash bhari ne avu ane chal ki jau evudu vane van. Nagada nata chokara ne joy thai to akha gamne ani jem na van uman. He says, uh, we will just arrive and fill the sky like this these clouds and um, shower out of myself over forests and fields and those village children those naked village children who will come out prancing in glee when it begins to rain uh, the whole village will be eyeing them enviously because that's what they all want to be doing all adults but don't have the courage the gaiety the abandon to do so so he says, it may be so. Uh, all I have to do is arrive and shower uh, on the village and in the fields from where it rises to where it sets. Now here comes the second antra, again carrying the kernel of the philosophy of the whole song. Sao dhoda ke sav kala, jem chahi eva phul gulabi rangani relam jhel. He's speaking about the colors of clouds. If I were a cloud, I could choose to be utterly brilliantly white or dark murky black. I could choose any color I like, like a riot of colors bursting. Apana moje apana chittar kadiye evu aikhu made dehani tute jail. Imagine what a life that would be where you could paint your own form, your own shape, at your own whim and liking, you could break free of the prison of this form, this body. He signaled many, many ideas here that we have been discussing. The idea of not getting limited by your own self-definition, not getting trapped into a boundary, a form, but always being amorphous, ready, shape-shifting, and leaping out of the constraints of this body. Apane to bas apana mathi nikdi javu, jharmari ne koi ajani jhankad gheli pandari vishe. All I will do as a cloud is just slip out of myself. And this is where the theme of emptying comes, right? That's what clouds do. They empty themselves and shower down on us like gifts, right? They don't see who they are giving gifts to. It's a gift to the unknown. Unknown leaf somewhere, thirsting. But this cloud doesn't even know her. So when you touch this moment of creativity and this moment of creative expression, where you lose the self, you become a gift for the universe. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank 
अपना विषय अपने तो आकाश भरी ने so uh i find an interesting resonance between uh, dhruv dada's use of the term uh dehani tute jail you know breaking free of the prison of the self the prison that prahlad ji spoke about the boundaries that tie us down breaking free of that prison i find it interestingly resonated in uh so it's uyanagi saying that the korean bulls have no overstressed individualism about them in that respect they are utterly different from objects made today by modern artists in search of self expression contemporary free form is willful and unfree in fact it can be said that the pursuit of freedom has led to prison gates the prison of the self he is speaking about the free form that emerged uh, in modernity you know that bro- wanted to break away from tradition from craft to find that original self expression which came as a as a fallout of the post renaissance rational hus- humanism which put the human being at the center of the universe uh, so i think kabir dhruv dada lewis hyde soetsu yanagi are all pointing in a different direction lewis hyde speaks about two kinds of life zo life and bios life zo life is that uh, it's a kind of uh, life that is real and genuine a life active vigorous that comes directly from the divine it's the vaster idea right bios life is your small self the life you lead as a small self so once we realize that the thread of uh zo life runs beyond this physical body beyond the prison of the self beyond the deh ki j- jail as dhruv dada put it beyond the individual self it becomes harder to differentiate the various levels of our being there is a larger self a species essence which is a general possession of the race 
and all works of art, paintings, songs, styles, these symbolizations which express and carry the facts of zoo life constitute the speech by which that larger self articulates and renews its spirit. You are only a vehicle for that larger self to express itself. And I'm going to show you a, a moment from a film. I hope will carry some resonance for you. Um, could you just give me a minute? हमने जिनसे सीखा है या जिनसे हमने सुना है और वो अभी जिंदा हैं थम अबे थम ने तो सिन्नार की धुनी पे खूब गाया और थमारा जोड़ीदार सब मरी गया अबे थमे दरी क्या खाली एक ला आप वो आएंगे तो नहीं है नहीं पंचा महाराज ने भी सूरदास बाबा भी मरी गया सब गया ये भी बालक उम्र में था हाँ और वो भी ऐसे थोड़ो लगभग पच्चीस साल हो गए हमें, है ना? पच्चीस से भी ज़्यादा हो गया, तीस साल हो गए लगभग। हाँ। तो फिर ज़्यादा देर नहीं करा, मैं तब अपनों एकदम अच्छे लटके झटके के साथ में और जो जो ऐसा वजन जो मने भी नहीं सुनिया का दी। ऐसा एक दो चार सुने दो कैसे सुने दो मार्च हाँ हैं आप सब जानों से हम हैं नहीं आपके साथ हम्म वो इससे सीखियो इसको मैं ले गया था इनके पास से हाँ सबसे पहले इनसे मैं ले गया अपने पास कार्डबोर्ड दा रहा जब और कई साल तक मेरे मेरे पास रहा ये थोड़ा आगे � नरा दन में आत्मिक नरा दन में कि नरा साल में हाँ नरा साल में ओ चंदा जाएगा वो सुराज जाएगा चंदा जाएगा सुराज जाएगा ये जाएगा पवन पानी रमन तुम जाओगा हम जाने अब बार बार ताप रहे हैं बस आया हाँ हाँ लाओ हम लाते हैं हूँ गाऊँ थमने मारे से गाया भी खूब गाओ खूब गाया
हमें साहिब से मिलना है अरे यार सतगुरु से मिलना है हमें न से हर में तो नसे में खूब यार मेरे गुरु से मिलना है हर में नसे में हो रहा मालिक से मिलना है इस पाप कपट को छोड़ हम सागर को जीत हमें मैं दत्त में जाना है अरे तो नशे में हो यार मेरे गुरु से मिलना है हाँ मैं नशे में हो रहा मालिक से पर ठोकर ये है नहीं जब तो बोलो 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 अन्नी मारते इस हद को छोड़ दे हद में गाना है बोलो अरे यार बेहद में जाना है अरे हद को छोड़ बेहद में जाना है अरे यार बेहद में जाना है हर साहेब कबीर भक्ति कर दो आ साहेब कबीर भक्ति कर दो या गम बानी गाई हो ये तो भांग वाला भजन है हाँ गाओ तो हाँ ये भांग का भजन की छाप है चलो फिर कहीं आज मां साथ है जहां हम जाएंगे मां बाकू भरूं कोई बात नहीं मां का कल मां का तो सब होएगा ने बाको कौन हो मालूम बाको कौन होए इना झाड़का को पर जब तो फल लगे नहीं तो नमी जावे जिक कहना फल है नहीं रहता वो कहीं वो बाको कहीं होए सब साहब ने बांध पिला साहब ने बांध पिला अकियों में लाल ने चाहिए हो साहब ने बांध one who has tasted, partaken of this zo life, this larger self, which is the species essence, which is the commonwealth 
of a community. One who has tasted that zoo life is humbled under the weight of the gifts she has received. And like a fruit laden tree, she offers them as gifts to others. So uh, I wanted to share this uh, video with you because it signals many things about the spirit of the oral traditions, the folk music traditions in which I have learned all these lessons as a creative practitioner. Uh, where I see, um, I see this as a cultural creative commons of sorts where boundaries blur all the time. Uh, even the song they sang was speaking about breaking out of boundaries. Um, there are no hard defined uh, boundaries of creative egos of any kind, whether of composer, nobody knows who composes, who composed these songs. They are the distillate of a species essence that you are partaking in, that you receive. Uh, nobody even knows who wrote these songs. You see, they go by the name of Kabir, but uh, many, many, many anonymous poets have, have staked a claim to that name and expressed themselves through it because it didn't really matter to put your name there. It, this is a, a, is a creative commons that refreshes the spirit in ways way past the claims of IPR and uh, you know, your stamp as, as, as a creative ego. So all boundaries blur in this, in this uh, space of the commons in a way that is refreshing that refreshes the soul. And now I would like to end by a small note because uh, I do not also want to romanticize necessarily the this. Uh, we do operate, don't we all, in a market as, a, as artists. So let's see what Lewis Hyde has to say about that. A market economy is an emanation of logos, region, reason and logic, the principle of differentiation in particular. A gift economy is an emanation of eros, the principle of attraction, union, involvement which binds together is a gift, not a commodity. Or rather, works of art exist simultaneously in two economies, a market economy and a gift economy. But a work of art can survive without the market. But where there is no gift, there is no art. Unlike the sale of a commodity, the giving of a gift tends to establish a relationship between the parties involved. So gift exchange is a kind of erotic commerce. A market exchange has equilibrium or stasis. You pay to balance the scale. But when you give a gift, there is momentum and the weight shifts from body to body. If logic is the money of the mind, then imagination is its gift. There will be times when an otherwise useful application of logos wounds the imagination, when the money of the mind destroys the gift of the mind, when the spirit of the market destroys the gift which cultures have in their works of art. So. I have learned some difficult lessons about how to negotiate these two economies, what I call Bhavki economy, where I trade in feelings, when I work with these songs, when I sing them, and the market economy, never at any moment allowing the market economy to fully define my practice. And it is when we, I mean, just a parting note from Kabir. Had chhadi behad gaya hua nirantar vas. Kamal ek phula phool bin nirkhe hai nijdas. Leaving the small, I leap into that vast. I stay in the boundless now. A lotus blooms, no flower is seen. I sit back and say, wow. So that's where I bring my 
presentation to an end. I'm sorry, I think I have gone uh, beyond my time, but I'm very happy to take questions um, and engage in a conversation. Thank, uh, thank you, Shabnam, for the wonderful talk. Uh, it, it's been raining in Mysore also, and it exaggerates the event more. <laughs> we enjoy the talk. I yeah. think we were so we will allow blessed everybody with... to soak in the lecture for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, think we were, I think we were. I think we blessed with rain and decent connectivity. I was expecting things to snap at any moment <laughs> because here the light keeps going yeah. when it rains, and uh, but that yeah. didn't happen. So yeah. yeah. I don't know if uh, Dhruv Dada is here and would he like to say something? Dhruv Dada Tame Kesho Kai Jo Amari Sathe Cho Who translate Karis? He had said I'll come, but I, I will not say anything. I will I will just listen. So maybe he's here, maybe he's not here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can open up for uh, maybe questions. Uh, it, we, we can move in any direction. Any observations from anybody? Uh, I can hear them. Uh, I have a voice to show them. Uh, uh, can I? Pritam, your uh, voice is very low. If you can come closer to your mic. Yeah. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, better. Yes. Thank you, Shabnam, for this uh, very uh, interesting session. And I think it will be lingering in my mind for a long time, probably. Uh, so, and I have been following Abu Fayaz, uh, Abu, uh, and uh, the Sufi songs also by uh, Abida Parvin since a long time. And I was trying to find my ways into the kind of dialect, in, into the lyrics they eventually present. Uh, but at this point of time, and I read one of your article, uh, like you mentioned that, that you come from an agnostic background. I mean, like but at one point of time, it was difficult to understand like where you were leading to. And then you probably traveled to Chhattisgarh and then had uh, quite an experience there to understand um, where is Kabir or like how eventually your uh, path is going to be. So my question here, here is, I mean, like um, for a person very at a very nice stage of understanding Kabir and his ideas, his methods. Uh, finding Kabir is a kind of a diverging process or a kind of a converging process, as in, I should I try finding Kabir, the soul, uh, in people, in animals, in, in all the worldly affairs, in kind of phenomena that are happening around me, or should I dive deep into me to find the Kabir? So that's something where I am a bit lost and probably you can shed some light into this question. That's a very beautiful question. Thank you, Pritam. Uh, you know, very often in trying to understand what Kabir is, where Kabir is pushing us, I find that the answer invariably lies in collapsing an unwitting duality we set up. And I think the duality you have just set up right now in your question is within and without, Bahar and Bhitar. And that is a duality Kabir will not admit of. He will ask you to go deep within to find the whole world. He will say, and so will Rumi, that we believe Rumi's one beautiful quote which, in fact, Farid Ayaz uh, shares with us on our archive, Ajab Sheher. He says in uh, Farsi or Persian that uh, people imagine that the, that the human being is in the world. Little do they realize that the world is in the human being. Kabir says, Padi boon samund mein jane hai sab koi. Samund samana boond mein jane birla koi. That the drop falls in the ocean that everyone sees, but that the ocean is held in the drop that the rare one sees. So, what does this mean? I mean, it sounds very interesting. 
But I believe that is what the mystics are inviting us to do, to connect with your own self so deeply that you connect with the world. Uh, Prahlad Ji loves to say, Jo khud se jud gaya, wo sab se jud gaya. Unfortunately, what people try to do is collect, connect or identify with collectives out of them, outside of themselves, like the religious community, the national community, I am an Indian, I am this, I am that. These are all externally defined collectivities to which we try and pin our insecure self. Kabir will say, no, first go within, find out who you are. When you penetrate that veil within, you will find the whole world within you. You know, you will smash all dualities of I'm this, not that. You will find all the diversity of this cosmos within the self. And that's why your self will melt in a sense, because your self is typically predicated on I am this, not that. I'm an upper caste, not a lower caste. I'm a Hindu, not a Muslim. I'm this, not that. I'm a man, not a woman. You know, this, all these dualities collapse. If we have the courage, the rigor of that inner work to penetrate the veil of all these identities and go deep within, you will find it all. So, Bahar and Bhitar happen together in one moment. It cannot ever be one at the expense of the other. That is how Kabir would, I think, answer this conundrum. Thank you so much. I hope it wasn't too abstract and I hope it came through with a palpable sense of something tangible. went in, inside me. I think I'll take time to absorb that probably, but then like, it makes sense to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wants to have any observation or questions? I'd love to hear uh, a question from some student. Yes, Nidhi. Yes. Hi, am I audible? Yeah, yes. Yeah, Nidhi. Yes, uh, I'm Nidhi. I'm from Bangalore. I'm studying in uh, third year currently. Uh, I have three things. If time permits, I'll probably ask all the three. Uh, firstly, uh, when you said, um, you know, an artist should let go his ownership of what he creates into becoming into becoming something else, like in the largest uh, scheme of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in earlier this semester, when we were uh, in, similarly in architecture as uh, students or practitioners, uh, we talk about creative process in design. Uh, so earlier we were, in the semester, we were talking about uh, how do we get ideas? How do we start getting ideas? Or where do we get it from? What's the inspiration? And uh, even if we have an inspiration, say we're referring somebody else's work or some great architect's work, uh, how much do we take from it? Is it copying and things like that? Mm -hmm. uh, similar to what you said in throughout the session, uh, there's an architect called uh, Louis Kahn. He also says uh, in architecture, when you create something which becomes so universal, uh, it never belongs to you then. It belongs to the institution that's architecture itself. Uh, I found that very uh, similar to what was uh, shared throughout the uh, session. That's one. Uh, two is uh, you sort of broke down uh, the uh, uh, process of creative process itself into four. One being listen, birthing, non-action, and emptying. The last one was very interesting. I resonated it with it a lot, emptying. So in the, the first day as architecture students, we didn't know what exactly we would be going through the rest of our lives. The first thing our faculty told was forget everything you have learned so far or like unlearn everything. So in our head, yeah. we would be like, how do we unlearn something that we have learned 17 years or 18 years of our life? But we didn't understand what, what were they saying, but yeah, like, after say like second or third year, you sort of understand the idea of that emptying or unlearning to 
molding yourself to become something else in the grander scheme of things that's two uh three is uh you said uh, yeah you have to let go that or let go of that ownership right uh i there was a recent uh, uh, i don't know if i want to say controversy or scandal where uh, the music composer ar rahman uh he had a original piece uh that was sort of taken down from another music director and the remix was not really a good uh, remix or like it was a let down for the original so when you say when you do something that beautiful it be- belongs to everyone uh when how how is it when you take something that's so like beautiful and you sort of strip it down to something else which is not very uh, uh not very beautiful or not very uh great like how the original was and it was, is it valid if the artist or the creator has a problem then when it's when he thinks that whatever you did with my work or the way you interpreted my work is not very uh uh i don't know i don't know the right word is it uh, it's not mm-hmm. sufficient or it's such a let down or some yeah i just wanted to ask that because when you said uh, it sort of yeah. belongs to everyone how do how is that creative uh, liberation taking place yeah yeah no this is a very uh, good and difficult question to answer um and which is why um i ended by by putting that in that that complexity that there are two uh markets there is the gift economy and there is the market economy that uh, uh a work of art circulates in and if you are interested in deeper ans- questions answers to this question from the same author lewis hyde i would recommend his next book um which is i think the creativity of the commons or something like that uh, the title is where he looks more deeply into this question therefore of livelihoods of survival in the market you know we are um, so there is there are two realities that must be held simultaneously it is not either or it is not that uh you cannot own anything and you have to keep gifting everything to the world and uh, end your life in penury it is about a uh uh alert negotiation at all times um that in negotiating the market worth of your art which is also important for collectives for rural communities for uh, communities who have created these art forms which then these bollywood film directors come along one day casually lift it make a blockbuster hit without so much as a thank you please uh with your permission may i without any of that and they make pots of money on that there are problems there in fact even i would say dhruv dada would disagree with that even though he has written a song like uh tame gaya aakash bhari prite he would say you are free to sing the song but not free to end to make money make pots of money that's not the freedom one is giving right so uh so it is a, a it is a really important negotiation you have to do as creative practitioners where in the professionalization of your art you do not lose touch with that zo life with that species essence with that larger self that that is is that you are you are a vessel for if you lose that if you lose your ability to court that if you lose your humility towards that if you lose the ability to give back to that in ample generous measure as much as you have received from it and every creative practitioner finds their own ways of giving back if you become only a narcissistic practitioner believing that you are the wellspring of this idea and it originated with you you will end up feeling very hollow i would say hollow not in the good sense of emptying yourself hollow as in the sense of loss of meaning loss of uh location why are you here uh so 
I don't know if I've sufficiently answered your question. I, I find that whenever I, in my creative practice, uh, I challenge market logic, either in the way I quote a fee or don't quote a fee, or choose to gift what I want to share. Uh, whenever I successfully step out of the market, I find my soul is refreshed. If I quote something really good, impressive, and I get paid for it also, cool, good. But it doesn't match the experience of uh, the replenishment my soul receives when I, when I manage to transact in the, in the commerce of bhav or in the gift economy. So, so it's a complex process. You have to find the right balance and find your avenues of not just taking home, you know, there is this, aapka take home kya hai? This phrase is so telling in the times we live in, where careerism and professionalism is all about what your take home is. Nobody in, really is speaking about give back anymore. It's all about self-worth through take home, through taking rather than giving. So I'll quote uh, Shafi Muhammad Fakir, a Sufi singer I met in Pakistan uh, from one of the films, Had Anhad. In that, at one point, he says, uh, look here, profession or ishq mein fark hota hai. Profession ye poochta hai ki mujhe profit kitna hoga. Ishq ye bhi nahi poochta ki mujhe ghaata kya hoga. You know, that would translate as, there's a big difference between profession and passion. Profession asks, what will I profit? Passion doesn't even ask the question, what will I lose? And as the poet Walt Whitman says, the gift is to the giver and comes back most to him. It cannot fail. Thank you, ma'am. Lastly, uh, beginning of the session, I was a bit skeptical about attending it because I thought it was in the right place for me. But yes, I think I would have regretted it if I would have missed it. Thank you. I really enjoyed the session. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you. Thank you for your initial observations as well. You know, you talked about emptying uh, as a young student in an architecture college, can you imagine what the implication of emptying oneself would be for some of us who are much older with a lot more baggage that has gone stuffed? We've had many more decades than you to stuff ourselves with all kinds of ba baggage that doesn't move, that weighs us down. Uh, what in Buddhism is called beginner's mind. We have lost that. Children have beginner's mind. You young students have the capacity to connect with that beginner's mind. It's much tougher for us to, to apprehend the dustness of life. We are too quick to categorize, to label, to claim, to disclaim through the intellect. We, we're, we're not in touch with the dustness of things. So thank you for your comments as well. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Ria Malvi. There's a question. When did you really find Kabir Ria, so influential you... that you wanted to know more about his teachings? Uh, the moment uh, where uh, Kabir began to speak to me was in uh, the year 2002, in the aftermath of uh, religious riots, anti-Muslim riots in the state of Gujarat. And I was living in Ahmedabad then. and. Uh, Kabir, uh, Kabir uh, very searingly questions this kind of uh, attitude that we take so easy recourse to, which is vilifying a demonized other and feeling uh, kind of secure in groups, you know, groupyism. Kabir would question that at the core. If you are getting all jolly about being in a group of any kind, question yourself right there. So that's when I turned to Kabir and uh, yeah, and started seeking answers to 
to the question of why there is so much violence and division in human society and got many more answers than I ever imagined. Hi, Shabnam, thank you so much. Hi, it's always, hi, it's always a pleasure to, to hear you. And uh, it's always extremely moving, especially to me. I think uh, you touched that chord as a gift, and I must thank you for it. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Snehal. <laughs> Uh, we, we can wait for another question or to shut them if it's not late for you. Sure, sure. I, I'm happy to wait. No ah. issues. Uh, anybody else has any questions? Maybe I, I have the question myself, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I read, I, so I read the uh, gift a uh, few years back. So I, I just started teaching or maybe as a young teacher, two years into teaching. And it completely resonated to me as a teacher. Uh, the one that the one teaches because uh, also of the students, but one teaches because one is taught. And you know, and then that, that gift is somebody given to you and you just go to college just to give the gift to somebody else and that uh, freed up freed me up a little that's so beautiful wow to In teach way, because you have been taught to teach, want to yeah. say something about that. i i lost the last part of what you said could you just repeat the last two sentences kiran uh sorry yeah did it also resonate with you you also teach so uh the gift very book, much uh, it, very uh, much okay. it totally relates to me it's like uh you know, uh, Lewis Hyde in his book, The Gift, speaks about uh, studying Native American Indian cultures and gift giving traditions in indigenous communities. And he says that in many of these communities, if you receive a gift and you don't pass it on, it brings bad luck. You know, a gift is meant to be circulated. It's not meant to be hoarded. You don't say, oh, it's mine. Now it'll stay here. It has to be in constant circulation. So I really, really relate with what you are saying, Kiran, very much that when you have received so much, it becomes a tremendous burden if you don't pass it on. You know, it's like something weighing you down that you have received, uh, yeah. uh, you've, such fortune, such uh, their gratitude for, for so much that one has received, that the only response would be that I must pass it on now. And pass it on humbly with a bowed head, you know. Uh, because you were not the origin of it. You know, I remember when these four Kabir films were released in 2009 I met somebody on a tour somewhere and he said to me oh Shabnam I hear your work is creating ripples and I remember looking at him and saying really I thought I was a ripple myself you know and I'm sure if Kabir were here he would say he is a ripple himself where would you place it where would you place that stone entering water you can't. You have to. You you have to submit, surrender to that lineage of which you have been given the gift of being a part. You know, yeah. and uh, I think that has been the deep solace I have found as, an as a highly individual, socially socialized into a very individual attitude. Many of us urban educated, especially Western educated products of Indian society. Uh, are schooled, are socialized, are conditioned into a highly individualized idea of self and creativity. And I know the that, that sigh of relief yeah. in becoming a part of a tradition that's much larger than you. It gives to your soul to submit to something where 
you can bow your head and say thank you. That's all. Thank, thank you, Shabnam. That's a that's a deep solace to listen to you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else has any questions? We can take one or two before we wind up. Hmm. I think Sneha, you want to add yes, yes. I, I just wanted to, yeah. to continue on the light of um, you know being a teacher and uh, being in the act of giving. Sometimes I I I I question this act of giving because I'm so unsure of what I'm giving. So, so many a times, uh, you know, there is a notion that uh, that that wants uh, that that seems to me as though it is uh, it is as much taking as much as giving. And uh, in that light, uh, I I wonder, you know, how how my teachers felt because I I remember Leo and I remember. KB Jain and many of them who used to teach us used to, and, and even I today go to school to feel refreshed, you know. So, so as much as much as I I kind of give, uh, I think I I get replenished so much that um, it's it's this joy of uh, of just engaging with this younger generation who are who are searching, and and that I think is something that is so wonderful to be part of that search. And many times I, I, I really thank my students to allow me to be part of that search. Yes, wonderful. So beautifully put, Snehal. I would just add to what you're saying by saying that, you know, even for me in various moments, I have had this self-doubt, like, who am I to sing? Who am I to give? Who am I to hold forth? I'm not a trained singer. Uh, who am I? And I realize in those moments that you know, this is just another form of ego fixation because again, the focus is I. Rather, if you shifted the focus away from I to, to, to the students or to whom you are offering the gift of a song, uh, it begins to flow immediately because then you are not, like I said, offering your masterpiece. You are simply making an offering no. and that rescues you in that moment, you know. It's not about you, actually, at the end of the day. And I also say this uh, to people who often come to me and sometimes say, you know, I'm very moved by this work and these dying oral traditions and folk wisdom. Uh, I must, I want to contribute to save this tradition. So I immediately stop them and say, first, realize that you will be saved by the tradition. Yes. Uh, recognize that. So this is exactly what you are saying, Snehal, that you feel replenished in the act of giving. Uh, the gift is to you yourself, always. It comes back to you. So uh, when you come to this oral tradition, this folk form, with humility not with the arrogance of someone who will be the savior but rather with the humility that you are there to be saved by the tradition then you can do something with it very well sir uh, we can take a last question it's close to seven from sure one last question time. yes yeah yeah uh, nirmal you want to ask the question मुझे बहुत प्यारा लगता है और वो आपकी आवाज में तो बहुत ही बहुत ही जी वो शी यू आर स्पीकिंग आप वो उस भजन की बात कर रहे है ना करगुजरान गरीबी में साधु भाई मजबूरी क्यों करता या लिव इन सिंप्लिसिटी माय फ्रेंड व्हाई यू स्ट्रटिंग अबाउट इन एंड देन 
ही सेज मुला होकर बांग पुकारे क्या तेरा साहेब बहरा है रे भाई मुला यू गो अप ऑन टू योर मस्टियर देन यू बेलो आउट योर प्रेयर्स हैज योर लॉर्ड गॉन डेफ कभी रास्क चींटी के पाँव नेवर बाजे सो भी साहेब सुनता है रे भाई ऑन द एंकल on the ankle of an ant that little pile that anklet that too the lord hears so yeah. why are you strutting out uh, around <laughs> showing off your stuff um shayad gaane ka bhi scope na ho maine us poem ko share kiya itna kafi hai mujhe mera tambura bhi galat pitch pe tana hua hai kyunki dhruv dada ke sare geet bahut unche hain so i i i won't be able to immediately sing it for you aapke khali awaaz se bhi bahut acha lagega khali ek line ga dijiye kar guzran garibi main sadhu bhai magaruri kyu karta ha mulla ho kar bang pukare kya tera sahib behra hai re bhai चींटी के पाँव में नेवर बाजे सो भी साहिब सुनता हाँ घर गुजरान गरीबी में साधु भाई मगरूरी क्यों करता हाँ थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच दिस हैज बिन वेरी एनरिचिंग सेशन वी कैन मे बी ब्रिंग Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Shobhan. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your generous time. Yeah. Thank you. We hope you can come to drop by college when you're in life. I would love that. That would be a joy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks all of you for attending. Thank the you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Chitta, our meeting end, man. Buddy. Box. Box.